What if I told you that during World War II, while most people were hiding from Nazi patrols or trading potatoes for survival, one Dutch engineer looked at his front door and thought, what if I could just drive through that? Well, he did. And what rolled out of that idea wasn't a tank or a jeep or even something you'd call a car with a straight face. It was a three-wheeled canvas-covered contraption that could go just as fast backward as it could forward, and somehow ended up in a circus. Welcome to the story of the DAF Mobile Raincoat, possibly the strangest escape vehicle ever built, and maybe the only one that made both Nazis and clowns equally confused. Before we dive in, hit the like and subscribe button for more fascinating videos and may god bless you for supporting this community it's 1943 the netherlands is under nazi occupation gasoline is strictly rationed rubber is nearly impossible to get and if you wanted to drive anywhere you basically needed a miracle or a horse enter hub van dorne a dutch engineer and the man who would one day found DAF, a company famous for trucks, transmissions, and quietly brilliant weirdness. Hub wasn't your typical wartime survivor. While others were melting down pots for scrap metal, he was staring at his workshop thinking, I can probably build a car smaller than a refrigerator. And so, out of bicycle parts, motorcycle guts, and enough canvas to make a tent, he built the mobile raincoat, or as locals called it, the DAF Reginyas. It wasn't meant to win any races. It was meant to move when nothing else could. Something light, sneaky, fuel-efficient, and, if you happen to be chased, small enough to fit inside a house. Literally. The DAF mobile raincoat measured about two meters long, less than a meter wide, and just under five feet tall. It was so tiny that you could roll it straight through a doorway. Under its thin sheet metal skin and waterproof fabric roof sat a single-cylinder 150cc engine, borrowed from a motorcycle. The whole vehicle weighed around 150 kilograms, which is less than most modern motorcycles. To save on materials, Van Dornay gave it three wheels, two at the back and one up front, and wrapped the body in canvas, not metal. The doors were a little more than flaps. The roof was basically a rain poncho on a frame. But here's where the madness turns into genius. Because of how the drive system worked, the front wheel and engine could rotate 180 degrees, meaning if you wanted to go backward, you didn't shift gears, you literally swung the wheel around and drove off in reverse at the exact same speed as forward. Top speed, around 35 miles per hour or 56 kilometers an hour, in either direction. If you're picturing someone accidentally reversing through a living room wall, you're not far off. At first glance, it looked like something a circus would reject for being too silly, the suspension was little more than hope and prayer, the steering was twitchy, and the brakes were, let's be honest, optional. But buried under that absurd exterior was a real spark of innovation. See, Van Dorne was already experimenting with an idea decades ahead of its time, the continuously variable transmission, a gearbox that could change ratios smoothly, without steps, the mobile raincoat used a primitive hydraulic torque converter, a little mechanical trick that allowed the tiny engine to deliver power more efficiently and keep the car moving even when the driver had no idea what he was doing, which, in fairness, was most of the time. That idea, that smooth, stepless drive, would eventually evolve into DAF's legendary variomatic system, used in their post-war cars and later in Volvo vehicles. So yes, under all the slapstick chaos, the mobile raincoat was secretly a prototype for modern automatic transmissions. It might have looked like a rolling raincoat, but it was carrying the seed of a revolution. After the war ended, the mobile raincoat didn't exactly retire to a museum right away. 
it went somewhere even better. A circus. Not as a mode of transport, as part of the act. Clowns loved it. It was absurd, unpredictable, and just barely functional, perfect for physical comedy. Two clowns could squeeze inside, roll around the ring, and pretend to crash into things while the audience screamed with laughter. Imagine explaining that to a German officer in 1943. No, no, this is not a resistance vehicle. It's for, uh, clown purposes. The little car that survived wartime scarcity became a literal joke, but one with real engineering heritage. Eventually, the little car found its final resting place at the DAF Museum in Eindhoven, where it's lovingly restored and displayed like a war relic crossed with a toy. It sits next to the serious trucks and polished sedans that came after it, a reminder that sometimes the weirdest ideas are the ones that change everything. Today, looking at the DAF mobile raincoat feels like looking into the mind of someone who refused to let the world's worst war kill creativity. While others were fighting to survive, Hub Van Dorne was still inventing, still tinkering, still asking, what if? And that's the beautiful paradox of the raincoat. It's half joke, half genius. On one hand, it's a wobbly three-wheeler that looks like it escaped from a Looney Tunes episode. On the other, it's a symbol of Dutch resilience, proof that innovation can survive even under occupation. It tells us something about humanity, that in the darkest times, some people don't stop building, they just build smaller. Sure, it wasn't fast, it wasn't practical, and it probably terrified anyone who tried to park it, but it worked, it moved, and when fuel, rubber, and hope were in short supply, that was enough. So what have we learned today? That sometimes the most brilliant ideas come wrapped in canvas and chaos. That one Dutch engineer with a stubborn streak can outsmart an army with nothing but scrap metal and imagination. And that maybe, just maybe, Every circus needs at least one wartime escape car that can drive 35 miles an hour backward. If you enjoyed this dive into mechanical madness, stick around, because history is full of machines that shouldn't have worked, but somehow did. And hey, if Hub Van Dorne could turn a raincoat into a getaway car, what's your excuse for not finishing that project in your garage?